God bless you and welcome tonight to Greater Destiny Ministries live stream Bible study for Wednesday night. I am Bishop Jonathan Edward Locus Sr. We are glad to have you tonight and we pray that something might be said to help you during this midweek service and help you along your Christian journey. We thank the Lord for you joining us. Pray that your day has been prosperous and fruitful. And as we do always, we start our services off with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we come before you tonight. Lord, thanking you for your many blessings, your love and kindness, and your tender mercy. We thank you, Lord, for making ways, opening doors, and working miracles. You are a prayer answering God. Pray, Lord, that you look down upon us this evening. Strengthen our will and our desire to please you. Give us complete, total victory over everything that's not like you. Bind the adversary that will seek to come and destroy us. And Lord, we pray that you would move in a special and a mighty way. Move in our nation and our world. We ask you, Lord, with this pandemic that's killed 150,000 people, Lord, we pray that you would heal and deliver. Touch right now in a special and mighty way. We know, Lord, nothing is too hard for you. We ask you, Lord, to remember, Lord, the divisive racism that is going on in this country right now. We ask you to speak peace in the name of Jesus because you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, we thank you right now for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do. These blessings we ask right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you tonight, and we're going to go into our Bible study. A uh, couple of familiar passages of scripture. We will start in the 24th chapter of St. Matthew. And we will start looking at verse number 37. Matthew 24, 37. And it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. And I want to look, well, one more scripture here. We want to uh, look at too is the eleventh verse in chapter number twenty-five. We want that to go along with that. That's chapter twenty-five, verse eleven, and it says, "Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us.'" So the correlation between verse number eleven and verse number forty and forty-one, you got the word "other." Uh, two shall be taken. I mean, two shall be in the bed, one taken, the other left. Two shall be grinding, one taken, the other left. And then you see in verse number 11 in chapter 25, the other virgin. So we don't want to be part of that other, the other. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, if you look, if you want to pick up in that 25th chapter, that's where we want to start. When the Bible says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. First, you want to, you want to realize that the virgins here, the ten virgins, represent the church. You want to make that clear. The ten virgins represent the church. So we're not talking, when you talk about uh, five wise and five foolish we didn't talk, we're not talking in terms of five saved, 
five unsaved. No, 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 we're not talking about that. It says five were wise and five were foolish. They had lamps that had lights, which means that they were living the way the Lord wanted them to. But the problem was in verse number three, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So they had lamps and they had oil in the lamps but no extra oil to come in their vessels to help when their lamps went out. So that was a problem right there. And it's just a difference between you got a church, but there you have wise and you have foolish. That's all it is. It didn't say they were sinners. It didn't say they were bad people. It just says they were foolish, which allows us to really relate to what Paul talks in 1 Corinthians when he talks about the babes in Christ or those that still are fighting and dealing with carnality, worldliness. And so we would look at that tonight, 1 Corinthians 3, if you will. And he starts in verse number 1. He says that I, brethren, could not speak unto you spiritual but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So there he makes the differential right there between babes and carnality and those that are spiritual. And that is, that's a key right there between the wise and the foolish. See, the wise had oil, which means they not only had the Spirit of God, but they tried to maintain the Spirit of God. The foolish get so caught up in worldliness that they allow the world to put out their lamps because they lose their oil. Now, I never believed in once in Christ, never out. That's foolishness. If God can feed you with the Spirit, that Spirit can also be taken away from you. The psalmist said, Let's us know. He lets us know very, very clearly in the 51st Psalms, in verse number 11. He said, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit away from me. So we have to be careful with this pandemic, not just uh, with the coronavirus, but this pandemic of worldliness that is trying to invade the church. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to lose out on the spirituality because that's going to be the difference. It's not just being saved right now. The key is, are you going to be saved when Jesus comes? That's what this, that's what this whole message is telling us about. And what they did, the Bible said they slumbered. It said, while the bridegroom tarried, and this is what we're doing, we're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. This represents the time after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection until his coming or the rapture. Now, look what they say here. It says, while, in verse number five, it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So everybody has fallen into this state of slumber where we've been put to sleep by all the worldliness, all the things that are going on in the world, our life, our lifestyles, all these things that we're dealing with on a daily basis, is, is, is taking something away from us spiritually. So this is a problem. They slumbered and they slept. And this is a big problem because we've gotten caught up into too much of this and this is the state that the church will be in when Jesus comes. If you look in the third chapter or if you look in the book of Revelation and you look at the seven churches of Asia Minor, the seventh church is the church of Laodicea. That's the last church before his coming. And look at the condition of that church. Go to Revelation 3.15 and that'll show you where we are right now. Church world, is, this is where we are right now. 3.15, let's look at that. Look what he says. He said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Why? Look at the next verse. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. See, this is the problem. This is what puts us to sleep. Thinking we can provide for ourselves and don't need the Lord. That cuts back on your spirituality. Seeking God, going to God, is what makes us spiritual. But if we don't think we need God, this cuts back on our spirituality because you're already in a carnal atmosphere. Look what he said. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Look what he said. And knowest not that thou art wretched. We don't know the condition we're in. Are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. See, anybody that knows they in this condition, they will seek God and ask God, Lord, I need some help. Please help me. But look what he said. You don't know that. You think you, everything's all right. Who's telling you that? The world. That's all. And this pandemic has come to let us know we cannot do these things of ourselves. We need to go back. To seeking God. Look what he said. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich. In white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve. That thou mayest see. As many as I love I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. And look what happens. I wasn't going to go this far, but I'm going. Look at verse number 20. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear me, hear my voice, open the door, and I will come to him and will sup with him and he with me. So things that got so bad with the seventh church or the church of Laodicea, Jesus had been put out. He said, Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. I need to get in. But we've gotten so caught up in what we're doing, he's out. And this is the state that this, these five foolish virgins were in when the bridegroom came. And they came to the reality when he came that our lamp have gone out. And we do not have any oil. We do not have any spirit or any spirituality to draw on or to lead us. And they asked the wise, give us some. We just got enough for ourselves. We need, this is a time, even still just talking about how bad things are, this is a time we need to be seeking God. We need to be going before the Lord. And this is where we need to be. God's trying to tell us. If you look at First Peter, if you will, 417. Judgment. Judgment is here. Judgment not coming. Judgment is here. 417. If you follow me with your Bible. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Look what it says. Let's, let's look at it. It said, for the time is come. That judgment must begin where? No, here it does not say church. It says house of God. That's where we go to worship. That's where church goers go, so called worshipers, church people. He said that's where judgment going to start at the house of God. And if it first begins at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What's going to happen to those that are in the congregation that hear the gospel but don't obey it? He said, and if the righteous, those are the ones that are obedient, scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So that gives you three groups right in the congregation. You got the righteous who are just going to make it. That scarcely be by the skin of the teeth. Then it also gives you a group, the ungodly, that will not obey, and the sinner that is just there, just to be there. 
what's dangerous in this time that you're living in, people are falling under the spell not only of the spirit of error, they're falling under the spirit uh, of a pseudo, a pseudo spirit that gets you all emotional but won't let you live right. See, while, you, while we're at the church sleep and getting emotional, what's happening to your lamp? What's happening to your oil? Going out. And we see and we got something that we don't have. So he said judgment going to begin there. Going to begin at the house of God. What's going to happen if we are in the church? and are not prepared. See, these weren't bad people. These weren't people out in the streets. These were people in the church that were not prepared to meet God. Now go back to that 25th chapter and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wind this up. Let's wind this up. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this. So they asked in verse number 8, say, give us some of your oil for our lamps are gone out. They woke up to the point, our lamp is out. In other words, they woke up to the point, we're not living the way God wanted us to live. We've been doing things that we should not have been doing. And we realize that now. Imagine that was kind of like the people did in Noah's time. After the ark was shut up. And people started to drown with that water. I imagine they realized then. I should have took advantage of that. So, look what the wise said. But the wise answer said, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. In other words, go and try to get some now. Go and try to seek God now. Too late. Too late. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. That talks about them being in a state of unreadiness. And they, now watch this now. I want you to watch this because this is going to break it down a little bit for you. It said, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. So who was that? Those are the wise. See, up in the second verse, it says five wise and five foolish. But look at the change of the language. In verse number 10, it says, and they that were ready. So the wise go from just being, not just being wise, but they are ready. They were ready, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. That was the wise. Those were the church folk that was ready. See, just being in church, just being faithful, it don't, that don't guarantee you nothing. He was coming back for a, a church. A church, the, the scripture tells us, without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He was coming back for a church with a light. Let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. He's coming back looking for something, just like with those uh, uh, that fig tree. That fig tree with the leaves was telling him they had fruit. But when he got there, they didn't have nothing. So what did he do? He cursed it. He cursed the tree. All right. Let's close up with verse number 11. It said, and afterwards. See, after those that were ready went in. All right. It says, afterwards came also Note what they are now. They are no longer the foolish virgins. Look at what the Bible calls them. Other virgins. Saying, Lord, Lord, open us. Now that's the same other that you'll find in verse number 40. It said, one shall be taken and the other left. That means you left out. Look at verse 41. This is 2441. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. See, these were not bad folks. These people probably um, live moral lives. But the Bible is telling us in this particular message, we have to strive. The Bible says strive that you may enter in at the straight gate. We have to strive. 
We have to keep working on ourselves and get to the point where we do not get caught up in a state of slumber and comfortable. See, that's that's what this means. It's comfortable in the way that we are and not looking for the coming of the Lord. So let's keep that in mind. See, they, they went from the, the, the wise version went from wise to they that were ready and went in. The foolish went to other virgins. And look what it says. They were left out. They said, Lord, open unto us. When that door closed, that was it. They was not coming back in. So, while we have the opportunity, we need to make our calling and election sure. If we're going to do that, Jeremiah gives us some good advice. Jeremiah 6, 16, he says, seek the old paths. Seek the old paths. When you find them, look what he said, when you find them, walk therein. We don't, you don't want to get up caught up into this modern day Christendom that is, that is really getting a lot of people caught up in things that's not. i tell you what. Let's go to Colossians. I might have to end there tonight. Let the Lord lead us on where we're going. Go to Colossians. Chapter number 2, I believe. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. Let's start at verse uh, number 6. Colossians 2 and 6. Look at that. It says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Look what he says. Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. See, he said, don't don't get caught up in the system of the world. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. That's what we want. The key is Jesus. Don't get sidetracked with a lot of stuff that don't make no difference. He said, in him, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead by Well, what all do you need? You are complete in him. That's the key. All this other stuff, we need to get caught up in Christ Jesus and not a lot of foolishness of this world. Pray that something might have been said tonight to help you along your way during this Wednesday night. We pray that God will continue to bless you. Join us Sunday morning at 11 a.m. if you will. We'll be glad to have you. And we pray that something has been said. If you want to uh, watch this video, you can go on to Valerie Locus uh, Facebook. And we certainly will be starting to upload these videos. videos on my YouTube so you can start getting ready to look for that and we pray that something will be said that can help you along the way pray that may God bless you and keep you is our prayer